Welcome everyone to our Saturday morning Hukalo session with Jim channeling this morning. Uh, Rowie will be on the side, also Roxy helping out, and Sabrina is ill today, so I'm filling in for her, and my name is Valerie. In our room today, we have Stephen, Sheer, Makiko, Johannes, Brian, and Bianca. And we also have a YouTube link. Please join us there. All right. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. How is everybody today? I hope everybody's well. In the room with me today, I have Angie and Helga and Raymond and Will and Mark and John and Linda and Cynthia and Mark and who? Sandy. Sandy. Who stepped out for a second? So uh, we have 10 people, 11 counting me today. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome. Good morning. So uh, did somebody want to lead us in a, an opening prayer? Anybody? I can do it if no one else will. Sure, Jim. You go for it. Okay, very good. One moment. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> uh, one moment. I want to thank you, Mother, Father, God, for this opportunity to share information, spirituality, knowledge, and wisdom with everyone that will listen. We know that there will be a message out there for someone somewhere, and we thank you for that. We just ask that you be with each and every one, that we get the most out of this as possible, that we learn something new and that we are thankful for all the things that we have and that we know and that is around us. We thank you and praise you for everything that is happening because we know that it is for some reason. So thank you very much and I just want to just say thank you. I can't say thank you enough. Amen. Alrighty then. It, I know that Sabrina has requested that Shell come today. Is there any other requests for anyone else? Yes, for uh, Stanley Kubrick, the director. Stan Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick, director of 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, and um, the moon landing, some believe. The moon landings? Yeah, people believe that he uh, filmed the moon landing. That's more of a question, Sheer. Let's wait for that. Yeah. Let's okay. get the people requesting who wants to come to first. Okay, who wants? Who else? To Kerr for an update on the colonies. Okay. Anybody else? If not, then we'll just see who comes. Um, good, have a good session, everybody, and um, I will bring whoever is here to talk to you. Much love. See you in a little bit. Greetings. I'm Shell from the Trakani people. Greetings. 
How is everyone today? I see that there are a lot of people here. Hello, Shell. Nice to meet you. Is there questions that you need to ask me today? I was just going to ask those in the group if there was any questions. Um, just to interrupt uh, quickly, um, there was a request from Sabrina um, that you came through today, Shell. Yes. And she was interested in you talking about the ego. If you would want to share a little more about that, Sabrina actually asks about pride and the ego, but not always in a bad way, um, and, and allow us a way to move on. Yes, I would be happy to speak about those things. Pride and ego, where to start? There are so many things to talk about because, as you know, the ego is one of the prime functions of reality in your sense of personality, in your sense of identification, in your sense of knowing what is, what is and who you are. The ego is that which is the extension of yourself that goes deep within yourself, within the id, the and all the things that are connected with that. Now, many of you do not have a great imagination for the, the ego, which means you've kept yourself inwardly involved and not let the ego portion show too much to the outside world. But you still have an ego, and you still have those things in your life which you treasure and think that you know best about. It's hard for to find a place to start about the ego because it is such a vast subject. It is more general and more unspecific than some people might imagine. But the ego is part of your reality of who you are. Some people do not see themselves in, this, in the line of the ego, but have to recognize that each of you have an ego and it does have a function within you. It is also part of the belief system that the ego operates in. Do you understand this? The, the belief system tells you how far the ego should go and how far the ego is to engulf the personality. And therefore, that is why we, we as people, aliens included, spirits included, humans included, angels included, have an ego. All of them do. Yes. So therefore, what is it about the ego that is important? Some have large egos that encompass others when they run into them or when they meet up with them. You feel the confidence. You feel the ego as it moves out. And it's part of telepathy as well, because when you meet someone, you will let them know what you feel about yourself. Is that not true? So when you are meeting people in a telepathic way, they will know your ego. They will know that you're confident, or they will know that you are not confident. They will know that you are happy, sad, whatever, but they will also know in what perception of your being that you find yourself. You perceive yourself in a way that comes out to other people, and you perceive yourself in a way that becomes part of who you are. Now, the ego can be destructive or it can be uh, edifying to others. But for yourself is what is most important. You must understand that a huge ego is not necessarily edifying for the person. It can be destructive. Because why? Because it may not be able to let you get your messages across to other people. If you believe that your message is so important that it is the only message that can be heard or one of the only messages that can be heard, then the ego will turn those people's eyes away. Why? Because it's too forceful. So you must temper the ego. You must understand that the ego is part of who you are in the way of communication. 
And communication is a very important part of who you are. Now, those with very small egos have trouble communication, communicating as well because if you speak too softly or if you speak without definition or, in, or commitment, then the message can be lost as well. The ego is all about the message that you send out to the world. That is what the ego is all about. So when you send out your message to the world, you want your ego to be balanced. Not too strong and not too weak, but to be in part your message. It is more than that, of course. It is who you are, of course, within yourself. And it is how you feel about yourself, your positivity, your negativity, and your belief system comes to the ego as well. It must. If you do not believe you have a good ego, then you cannot have one. If you believe that your ego is intact strongly, then you will have a strong ego. Some people do not even reference their belief system when speaking to the ego because their belief systems are not attached to the thought process. Do you understand that? The thought process cannot does not necessarily belong connected to the ego, however it is. <laughs> so many things about the ego that, you, that are to be understood because it is an abstract. And you can put many things into it. And I get carried away because to talk about it, I have to speak in many dimensions. Do you understand that? So, can I have you ask some questions so that I can be more precise? I have a question, Shell. Yes. My name is Sandy. Um, I got from another channeling that the ego was a part of, like on the other side of the veil when we're in a soup, we're a soup of one unity. Yes. That the ego is what keeps us separated from and it makes us who we are, is a separation from the soup. Is that true? Okay. In some ways, that is true, yes. Because the ego is in uh, different... How do I put this? It is in different volumes on each person. It is different... It's different in each person, and it keeps you individual. Also, your personality keeps you individual. However, the ego has its own strengths and its own weaknesses. So therefore, it does separate you from others because it is who you are in the soul, what you have learned to be in the lives that you have lived. And over the, the, a multitude of lives, your ego goes up and down because of the lives that you lived. However, this is to give the ego balance as well and to experience the different things that the, the soul, the mind, the body, the soul, the whole person, the whole, whole of the person should be discovering about themselves. So when they go to the oversoul, the ego is somewhat of a temperature. It, it shows, it, it, it measures the temperature, the balance of each soul. Does that make sense to you? It me it's a measure. The ego is a measure of how successful your lives have been. But in the human experience, in the alien experience, the other experience, as you are alive, it is also a measure of what is happening in that life as well. Because some people remain with a great ego even though their lives may not be a great life, but they still remain high. Why? Because some of the past life egos are there to affect it. Some of their security is inbred. Some of their thought processes they know to be true, and it won't matter what things happen to them. They hold on to the, the possession of the ego from because it is who they are in the soul. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then others, 
will lose confidence or lose part of the ego because they give it up. Not because it's not part of who they are, but because they believe the sensory perceptions that are coming into them from others, from society, from things that they are experiencing, and be believe that, and take that belief system and diminish the ego because they feel that that might be correct. It might be the way that it is supposed to be. It is part of their belief system that their ego was too large, and so they brought it to a perspective that they could, the soul can believe that, that it is ready in this life or it is valid in this lifetime. That fits with the things that are happening with this lifetime. Now that doesn't mean that in other lifetimes it wasn't great or small or whatever, but in this particular lifetime, your belief system is saying that the ego should be here or there. Some people are not aware of how big their or small their egos are because it does not seem it does not seem to matter at that time. What matters is what's happening in the third dimension or their spiritual life or whatever is happening. It does not seem to matter, but it does matter. Because why? Because of the communication aspect. The communication aspect is very important. If you are someone that's going to speak to others, if you are someone that is going to be with others and have things that are important to say, you need to have an adequate ego about it. Otherwise, you will not connect. Otherwise, you will not be a part of it. People will shy away from um, non-confident speech or non-confident, non non-forceful ways because why because they feel that you are not confident in the information the information that you bring forth if you are confident in this information you must let them know that you are confident in that information otherwise the message will not be passed you cannot say well I really really love you and have that be a true communication because in a certain situations, perhaps that would communicate to somebody at some time in a certain situation. But you must look at the situations and say, would that communicate to the group if there is a group? That kind of speech would probably not communicate because it would be dropped from their thought processes because it had no real thought, it had no real power behind it. It needs to be pow be powered by the thoughts that are, uh, that are there. You cannot say something and have no power behind it and expect someone to, to grasp it. Do you understand that? So therefore, when you are speaking to people, when you are asking questions even, ask it in a way that is strong. Ask a strong question and you will get a stronger answer if they know the answer. Do I have another question? Yes, I do. Yeah. Hi, I'm Helga. Helga. Nice to see you. Blessings. My question then is when we move from the third density to the fourth density and up, it's more keeping the ego in check and more alignment and strong in our position and yet balance, is that how it works as we move up to the 6th, 7th, 8th and higher densities? <laughs> A very good question. You see the different densities have different ego uh, sensitivities because in the fourth dimension you do not need as strong an ego as you would need in the third because in the fourth dimension, you can you have more telepathy, you have more psychic abilities, and therefore you communicate more with without speaking. Um, the fifth and sixth dimension, especially fourth dimension, there's more speaking and still uh, less psychic. But in the third dimension, where you are now, you must have the strongest of your ego because if your ego is weak in this dimension it will be unheard of in another dimension because it is just that that much difference however 
Good question because the ego will come through in telepathy, as I said earlier. And so when your ego, when you're greeting someone and saying hello, there's how many ways to say hello? You know, it's like, hello? Hello! You know, do you see the difference? There is different ways to communicate, to perceive one another. And your familiarity has something to do with that as well. So whenever you're perceiving someone else, they're going to know in telepathy how you feel about them. So therefore, telepathy and the ego go, to, go together well because your ego will sense their ego and their, their confidence and their... And their um, belief system as well. How is it that your belief system is sensed by telepathy? Is that they'll see your positivity, your negativity, your indifference, your skepticism, whatever it is, is obvious in some ways and therefore speaks about your belief system and your perceptions of the world, your perceptions of your life and other people's lives and how they've affected you over the over time periods. Now, you may see someone one day and feel a different kind of energy from them, a different perception of who they are on one day than the other. And that has to do with where the ego is at. If the ego is feeling strong, you will feel that. If the ego is not feeling strong, if something has happened, if there has been a problem, if there has been a, perhaps a death in the family or something of this nature, the ego is affected by that because your ego is attached telepathically to all egos, really, isn't it? I mean, do are you not affected by the people in the room? Are you not affected by the energies that you come into contact? And that does affect the ego as well. But um, I think that the more important thing is to keep yourself balanced. Not to be overly sad, overly happy, da -da. of course there will be those times when you are overcome. So when we move more and more into the higher density, such as sixth and seventh and eighth, when we have very little physical need at all, how does that change? If you say we have egos even all the way up into the yes, higher you do. densities, mm -hmm. how does it change all the way up there and the angels and the light beings? The ego is more balanced there. The closer you get to the source, the closer you are to the greatest balance. So there is out of there are things that will still be out of balance in those densities. However, the closest closer you get to source, the lighter the density is, the greater the balance you have. Now, that's not to say that it will not get out of balance, and it does get out of balance occasionally. However, you will be more in charge of who you are in some ways. Now, in these densities, the ego is important in the sense that it is part of creativity, part of what you are creating in that field of uh, that environment. If you are creating a uh, um, life in the sense of communication and um, color and things of this nature, the, um, the ego will help you with that creative uh, necessities. Thank you very much. So, continue. I think that uh, Sabrina wanted to speak about how the ego is affects human life in other ways as far as uh, becoming over egotistical or under egotistical and how that interacts with the society. Now, people's egos do get in the way of their, as I was saying, the communication. But it also gets in the way of their forward movement. If you are someone that is looking to be spiritually moved, to move up in a greater spiritual way, move up in a greater creative way, then you must not let the ego get too far advanced. Let me tell you why. 
if you be if your belief system says I can do anything that I want however it comes across in the sense that you are better than someone else that you are better than society then you are then you are putting yourself ahead of things then you are not balanced you cannot put yourself ahead of who you are you cannot put yourself ahead of others because you are always equal and what happens when you put yourself ahead it slows you down because you're out here and reality is back here and so when your ego gets ahead of you you have to bring it back and put it in balance because you cannot properly see or determine what is to be done next unless you are in balance all as you see is the end of the goal what it is that you want in this project this whatever it is that you are doing you are seeing out and that is a wonderful thing to be able to see out there however your actions have to come in a progression and if your actions are not in the right progressions how can you achieve the goal and also it also affects other egos you're diminishing others you're putting things down you see in order for you to be successful you must be bringing other egos up you must be at least balancing with these egos because why they are part of your success they are part of your energy they are giving you the energy to succeed because they are looking at you and saying ah I like that idea let's move forward but if you crush their ego with yours then they cannot help you with their energy because it's not there they have pulled it away from you they have gone internally with their energy towards you and how can you succeed in a world of millions when no one is helping you with the, your energy you must understand that the people around you give you energy no matter if you believe that or not it is true your energy reflect is reflected by all those around you in every dimension so therefore when you do reach out and crush someone's thought process or ego it is also crushing your power as well is there more questions yes someone's here this is Cynthia thank you that seemed to be a very altruistic scenario I'm Thank wondering you. about uh, the ego of a person who is manipulating others through fear and how that ego um, is out of balance as well as the people who are easily manipulated through fear yes very good this has to do with the belief system also you see from very early childhood you are brought up to, in a certain belief systems with certain stimuli hitting you constantly society and parental guidance and things of this nature this is shaping who what the soul and the confidence is about you do have the personality that has come through the past the soul that is intact in the past however if it is affected in some early way in the in the in the mind body spirit sensibilities it can be either a follower or a leader every soul is made to be a leader every soul why because every soul is from God material every soul is made of God material now it is your it is up to you how much of that God material that you use that you believe you can use so therefore the manipulator is the one that has found in early ages that they are able to manipulate the system by their actions and deeds and words and things uh, even a baby will cry because it is hungry and therefore manipulates the parent to feed it and in a sense that's manipulation but it is only a survivalistic manipulation it's it's not one of 
uh, I'm just getting what I want. It is more survivalistic. So therefore, yes, there are techniques that are used for su survival where you manipulate others. So, but you learn how to do this in your early childhood, and it's either squelched at a certain age, or it moves forward and becomes uh, more of a way of life sometimes. There are those that have made manipulation a way of life, and how do they do that, and, and why do they do that, and what part of the ego is that? That is a wonderful question. Yeah. Um, but I'm also going to talk about the followers as well. Chill, First of all, me? the weakened ego is the follower. Whereas someone has told them they are th and put into their belief system that they are not able to do certain things, that they're that what they want to do or what they believe is not correct, and they have bought into this, they have accepted that. Now you see. Listen to that. They do not have to accept that. But they have accepted that. Why? Because they believe it. They believe it. If they did not believe it, it would not be part of their ego, belief system, life, whatever. And so they've accepted this. And I wanted to, uh, to make a point here. All of you that are getting this kind of uh, stimulation from outside telling you you cannot do things, you cannot be that, you cannot do this. Do not accept it because why? It is not who you are here, it is who they are here. It is external. Only you can tell you who you are and and what it is that you can do. If you believe that you can do it, why listen to people say that you cannot? Why accept that stimulus? Why bring that into the ego? Some people would say, the reason why I accepted it is because it felt true, or at least a part of it did. No. Do not accept it on a feeling basis. Accept it on a thinking basis. You must think about it first before you can feel it in, in the way that it should be felt in some ways. Now, that is one way that humans are, are different than other species, is they sometimes feel things before they think about it. They'll let people say things to them, and they'll immediately feel something and react from the feeling and not from the thought process that, hey, maybe they're wrong. Hey, maybe, wait a minute, I think that I need to think about that first before I react because the reaction, what does the reaction do? It only makes the situation worse 90% of the time. So if you would engage your thought processes on what is coming in from the outside, from society, from those people around you, from the things that, from the negativity that is uh, uh, trying to stimulate you, then you would, if you think about it first, you may not react the same. You may find that your reaction is, Excuse me, but I don't agree with that. Excuse me, but I'm not that way. Excuse me, but that is your thought and not mine. Did you ever think about it that way? Is that these stimulus, stimuluses that may seem to be a part of who you are are not really. They are that person's thoughts. And even if there is some truth in that person's thoughts, it's not necessarily who, part of who you are. It might be a little bit, but they cannot tell you who you are. You know who you are more than they know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, find out very quickly. Do some meditations and say, please, I need to know who I am. Don't you think so? 
Now, those that are manipulators are lazy. Let me tell you why. Manipulators have confidence in the fact that they don't have to do anything or they have to do less than others. That's where their confidence lies. Their confidence lies in the fact that they are not going to have to do the work. Their confidence lies in the fact that the work will be done for them. And what does that do? That does not strengthen the ego. No. Oh, on the contrary, it actually makes the ego dependent on the people that they are manipulating. So if you are a strong person and are very responsible and you are being manipulated because of kind words or thought processes that seem very nice and and good intentions and things of this nature eventually you're going to find that you are more responsible than the person that is manipulating you and once you find that you are more responsible the natural action for that is to question why you are doing the things that that person is getting you to do. Because what happens? Their thought process is going to go downhill. If you say, uh -uh, I'm not going to do that anymore, what's going to happen with the person that's manipulating? It's going to be, well, I'm very angry at you. I am going to make you suffer for not doing what I want you to do. What does that do to the person, the ego that is manipulating? Brings it down even farther. If you are subject to someone that is manipulating, they are most likely on a substance. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> there are those that take substances which makes them lazy, which makes them want to not work, and so forth. Therefore, they will manipulate others to do things for them. Now, it's not always that they are on substance, but they are doing, they are not doing what they should be doing. They are not balanced, and they are users. You have heard, you've heard of users. Now, when a user is discovered, what happens? They lose their power. Exactly. Thank you very much. They lose their power because they cannot use anymore. And what does that do to their ego? It is pretty much non-existent. So don't be a follower. And and look for the truth in each person. Look for the confidence behind the actions. Do not look for the nice words and the pretty words and the, and the oh, how wonderfuls, but look for the confidence of what the person is like. Look for substance in an individual. Sometimes you are able to see that there is not much substance there because they are just using words to bring to them the things that they want and they're not being a real friend. They're not being a real love. I mean, family-wise, I'm speaking. They're not really loving you in a family sense, but they're using you because you are a family. Now, of course, there are those that are ill. There are those that have needs. There are those that are not. Um, they're using people because they're ill. They, that is not necessarily a negative thing. They do have to survive. But they take it a step too far sometimes. A step too far. And you know when that is. And you... 
and I know that you call them on it sometimes, but every now and then you'll let them pass. However, is there any questions here? I think I'm going too far. Go ahead. You compare the soul to the ego, because the soul, I always thought, was the one that really carried us from life to life to life to life. It does. And I thought the ego set itself every life, but you're it does. Does. it does. It does in some it sense, yes. The soul, we get a personality from our soul. Exactly. But what I was saying, as he was saying, is compare the soul to the ego. He saw, said that the, uh, the soul is the one that takes us from life to life to life to life. Exactly. And the, soul, and the ego resets itself. Many times it does. And I was saying about that with childhood. You, your, uh, your past life may have been a very confident life. But this life, you may have different lessons to learn, and so the ego might be bombarded in a different way. You may not be the leader that you once were in a past life. And so in that sense, yes, the ego has been reset, but it, is still, it still responds to family, society, friends, lovers, enemies, whatever. And so therefore, your response to that response is the most important thing. You see, if you accept it, that's one thing. If you, do, if you are more of an individual, then you question it. So therefore, from this moment on, do not just blindly accept comments. Don't blindly accept anything, a belief system or anything. There are many that I have to I have to say this and some of you might I hope you aren't offended but there are some that take religion because they have no ego have no confidence they're in a low place and it is taking on another sense of godliness that brings them to a balance in their life that is fine but realize what you, what you are doing Realize that you are coming from a place of negativity to a place where God is filling a place in your life that you could not do with the people around you, society or whatever. Now, God is a wonderful way to help you balance your life, but do not be obsessed with it because why? You are God yourself. You have a soul that is part of God. Obsess on the fact that you are a human and you have a life and that there is importance for that life. You were created for a reason, not just for God to manipulate you then because you're going from one manipulation to another, but because he wants you to be an individual. He wants your purpose to shine forth. He doesn't want you to just blindly follow anything that is going on with a religious situation. He wants you to be aware of who you are in this lifetime. Now, I know that goes against some people's beliefs because they believe that, oh, you should be just uh, let him do everything for you. Let him be the everything, do the... The words have been skewed over the centuries, and this is not exactly what God is saying. He is telling you to be you. I made you the way that you are. You are an individual. Shine. Use the soul that is yours that I gave you. You don't have to ask me for every little thing. If there's needs, I will help you. But be strong. Be useful. Be who you are. You all have something to offer. And if those of you that are out there saying, oh, I don't have anything to offer, <laughs> you haven't looked. You are not being yourself. You're not balanced. Greetings, yes. Shell. This is Roby. Yeah, uh, we have some questions from the people who have joined us in the webinar Wonderful. today. Wonderful. I'd like uh, to hear them. I know there's a lot of people at your place, and they all want to interact as well. Um, 
Is there a Q, Valerie? Uh, I yes, did not Brian. Hear that. Brian, oh, looking to speak? Yes, uh, greetings, Shell. Greetings. How are you, my friend? I am well. Oh, I'm I'm so happy we're discussing this. Um, uh, I I I've been observing this for quite some time about the ego personality concept. Yes. And um, I'm I'm learning a lot, and I want to thank you. Um, that's what I feel sometimes. The ego, it it's really, I guess, feeling it coming from a place of balance, um, uh, keeping it in a way that. It's like learning when we're engaging with people in a dialect. It's almost like learning to or how to say how to say yes, know when to say no, and use the words I choose. Ah, excellent. Choosing is a marvelous choice of words because yes. a choice you do have. You have a choice of who of what things you believe and what things you do not believe. And and you do have a choice to be in balance or not to be in balance. And if you examine the life, you see many lives are unexamined. They don't even look at themselves. They, they, they go day to day blindly be, being who they think they are. And there's so much more to life and so much more to the soul, to the ego, to the inner self than they are even aware of because they... They choose not to see it. They choose not to look at it. They choose not to examine themselves. And thank you for that. Because choice will help you be balanced. If you yeah. choose to be balanced, you will have a greater understanding of what it is. Because you will have an introspective look at what balance is to you. Your ideas of balance are affected by others as well. What is it to be balanced? How is it to be balanced? You only know for yourself. No one else can say, look at you and say, you're not balanced. Which, but I just said that to other people. The thing is, they have to recognize it. I could say all I want. They have to recognize it within themselves. I can say all I want. But unless you recognize it within yourselves as each individual, it means nothing. But that's why I speak the way I do, with competence and power, so that you will recognize that there is more to you than what you think. Even all of you that are confident and balanced, you can become more because there is more to you. Always more. Thank you. Thank Shelley. you, Brian. Much love. Johannes. Hello, Shell. This is Johannes. Johannes. I thank well, you for this topic, first of all, because it comes synchronous. It comes very synchronized into my questions that I will ask about. Um, I have a friend with those kind of issues that he is taking uh, substance substances and having a problem with his his ways and his manipulation of other people and to try to do as less as he can in the situations and just to get it anyway what he wants. Yes. Uh, I was channeling for him yesterday uh, so my first question is if there's any other messages that didn't come through yesterday when I channeled for him that he needs to hear because he will listen to this recording afterwards and who I was channeling for. I will tell him this. Manipulating other people is not out of strength. It, out, it is out of weakness. When you have to manipulate someone else to live your life, you are weak. When you have to have someone else do things for you and have your life be completed by someone else, that means your balance is not right and that you are not a whole person. These substances are robbing you of who you are. 
I cannot be more sincere when I tell you this. I would love you to be who you are in the real sense. Instead of using these substance to escape into being someone that you really are not. You must understand substance use and abuse is escape. And it is a way of life that is not real, and it is a waste of who you are. I cannot put it more bluntly. Do not waste your life. Do not put yourself in a position where a chemical rules who you are. It brings sadness to me when I think of these things. Because I know of people with many chemical ab abuses. And to be who you are, you cannot live in another world, in another dimension, or an altered state. You have a purpose, even if you cannot see it at this time. It saddens me that you would have to alter yourself to survive. That is not what God has intended for you. And at this point, you may not even care. You may be so altered in your thought process that you don't care any longer. And that manipulation, even though it's not out of love or caring, it's a necessity to be, to survive. That is very sad and very weak. I'm I'm very saddened by that. May I add, it also opens the door up to less than benevolent <laughs> energies to manipulate you. Correct. Actually, Actually, once you realize, once you realize that the substance has taken over who you are, there will be negative results to that. Always negative results to that. I didn't want to really mention that, but it is true. That's all right. It's quite all right. It is important, perhaps. It's very important. It's very important that, that you know that there will be negative results. Johannes, I'm sure that these, this person is showing signs of negative results as well. Yeah, I, I want to speak upon what, what happened two days ago because there was a manifestation out of out of the blue, he got this, I could call it an epileptic seizure, but yes. that was an epilepsy as I would understand that, but it felt like a kind of a channeling that something took over his yes. history, and I want to know what was going on actually, and who that entity, and how that entity is connected to us, to me, and why this happens right now. That would need a professional. You need someone that knows how to deal with these entities and identify it. Without identifying the entity, you cannot remove it. Without knowing what it is, it cannot be dealt with properly. So did I remove it as I recognized it? You recognized it, but I do not know if you removed it. I am not there. However, that is a very dangerous scenario. Let me tell you why. In removing an entity from another entity, it can go into someone else nearby if they are open to it. So therefore, if you are going to remove it, make sure you give it a destination. It cannot just be removed. It must go to a specific place to be either clarified or what, whatever the purpose is. But it must be stated where it's going. Otherwise, it is free to move about and go wherever it wants. And you have to use the proper way of removing it. Otherwise, it will not go. You will know this in time. Because if it, it is not removed, it will show its head again. Thank you, Shell. That was really, really beneficial information for all of us. Um, Mikita? Yes, thank you. Um, blessing to you. Um, 
Greetings. Greeting. Hello. Um, I'd like to have a definition from you about um, <clears throat> ego, the difference among those words. Ego, spirit, and soul. Okay. That definitions are sometimes very important. I understand that. The ego is that part of the the personality that expresses itself. That is... Oh, I could narrow that down for you, if that's help. Certainly. <laughs> Thank you. In terms of communicating with others. Yes. Specifically ah, communicating with other, uh, other human fellows, uh, including inviting their spirit group so that your communication, well, my communication will be more effective. Love to understand the difference between soul group, spirit group, and ego. You see, all of them are involved with one another. That is part of the balance. The ego, the soul, the spirit, all in balance will bring you the perfect communication with others. Without a balance of these three together and plus the body the body must be feeling all right as well because doesn't the your physical condition affect how you speak sometimes so you must bring everything that is part that is you the ego the soul the spirit the mind the body it all must be balanced out your thought processes to the spirit to the to the mind to the soul to the body all has to be balanced for it to be an, a, a perfect communication. Now, you can have wonderful communication without being perfect. Do not, do not hesitate to speak because you're not feeling well. Because if other things are in balance and the body is just not feeling that great, you can just balance it out with, with the thought process because the mind, of course, is in charge but it knows about all the other things that are going on. Does that answer your question in some way? I'd like to understand the difference between soul and spirit. The difference between soul and spirit. The soul is the God, God part that he created for you to be an individual. The spirit is what feeds the soul feeds the God entity, the, the food of the soul is the spirit. And if you have a great spirit, your soul thrives. And if you do not have a, if you have a weak soul, then the spirit is not been fed. How is that? Interesting. And then how that relate to ego? The ego is connected to all that. And if you do not have, if the spirit is weak, then the ego probably will also be weak. But it will be, it will show itself as someone that doesn't have the spirit. You see, it is the, the ego is the expression of what is there, the expression of it. Okay. Mm, wonderful. Did that answer your question? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. We have a question from Christine. Christine. Okay. It is says, she there? Uh, she is not here, but I'm going to read you her question. Excellent. It was, what does the ISIS not represent? I'm not a, I'm not sure also, what she is meaning there. Okay, it's also called the Shet, Amulet, the Buckle of Isis, Blood of Isis. Oh, 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 she's a, it has different meanings in different species. It is an, an intergalactic symbol. It can mean many different things, but it is um not related to the soul, spirit, God, uh, necessarily, but it is an, an 
related to eternity in the sense of the whole sense of eternity, of the whole sense of never ending, never beginning, never ending. It continues. It is also a sense of uh, continuation of spirituality, love, guide, the basic things of that birth the universe which have been there since the beginning of if if you do not if you if there is love it was always there do you understand that love was always there love is an eternal it it can be cut off it can be finite but in the eternal realms it is forever Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to feel it. You wouldn't be able to know it or define it. It is always there, and it is defined differently by different species, different entities, different angels. Why? Because of your experience and your perception of it. It is much more vast than you think. But yes... The knot is about eternity, about everlasting, about never ending, and about keeping your faith always. Hmm, wonderful. She also asks if you know the meaning of why the ancient symbols change with each generation. It is it is change is inevitable. There will be changes in your perception of God all through your life. There will be changes in your perception of yourself all through your life. Every age has an, a different perception of itself. And therefore, as time moves forward, there is no such time, but as you move forward in your change, I think change is more accurate than time, you will find that things will become more aware and less aware. More aware and less aware. Why is this? Because your perception changes. Your belief systems change. The belief in w who God is becomes greater and lesser depending on where you worship and how you feel. And... and what things have happened in your life. You may experience God as a very weak God because nothing has really happened. But then again, you may experience him as the most powerful entity in the universe because he has opened your eyes to that reality. Search for that reality because when that reality comes to you, when, when you see that your eyes are open, that God is the greatest and most powerful energy in the universe, because he continues to create, you will see that nothing is impossible with you as well as with him. Because why? Your soul is part of God. Why shouldn't it be great as well? Now I said that very softly, but I said it softly because I want I did not want to say great as well because for some of you that would not perceive it. You would not perceive it correctly. Greatness is soft. Greatness is simple. Greatness comes out like enlightenment. Like a beam of light, very simple, pure. Do you understand? I don't have to shout it for it to be most important. Be who you are. Find your greatness because everyone has a portion of it. Including myself. Ha <laughs> ha! But find it in yourself. And that is the most important thing. And thank God for it. Because it is part of him that is part of you that is 
indistinguishable in the universe, but yet you are a most unique individual and very distinguishable in the universe. Thank you. All right, we have another question from Chris Rama. Yes. It says, can you ask for me, what is the purpose of race? And are we all related? Or is yes, race we are. Actually, we're all related, every single one. The difference, the reason for race is for you to understand yourself in others. Because you yourself is part of every race. You yourself is part of every other. You are connected by the soul because why? The God is in you in every soul. And I want you to see and God wants you to see that you are part of everything. No matter what it looks like. No matter what color it is. No matter if it has two fingers or forty. It is all related to the life experience. And race lets you know where you are in this particular life. That's all. But you are part of everything. You, re you understand, and you've probably heard this many times, that a sun that exploded... 50 billion years ago is part, there might be an ash from that sun in your system. You are part of the universe. You are part of everything that has ever existed in one way or another. Because why the butterfly effect, as you call it on your planet, everything is affected by everything, by everything, by everything, by everything. You can't bat your eyelids without it affecting something. Now, it may not be a great effect, but it is an effect because how many tiny little molecules are around that eye? How many tiny little molecules have you affected when you blink? How many air, little particles of air have moved around? Everything affects everything. That is all. Okay, and another question relating to that same thing. Are yes. the races created by different species to reflect uh, traits that offer different things to the um, whole of humanity? Can you read that again? I didn't get the beginning part. Okay, um, let me rephrase it here. Is each race separate being created by a different species having different traits to offer the whole of humanity. Yes, exactly. You will have different species giving different traits to let you know that they are all part of who you are. They are all part of what is reality, what, uh, what is part of what you could be, what you can be, and what you are. And so, therefore, that is why you experience different lifetimes. You do not experience one lifetime. If you, if you believe that, then I'm, I'm sad to say that you're wrong. Because you have to experience life in many different ways so that you can appreciate God in all of his essence. Because he's all of these things. Do you understand that? Our whole being, our whole reason, eventually is to understand who God is and to be a part of him in the most unique and personal way where we fit in. But I could live a, late, I could live a life as a human being, a Pleiadian, a Yigil, a Syrian, an angel, well, not an angel, they're created. But I could live many different lives and learn... Learn what? That I am part of everything. I am part of the universe. And what? Ah, I can be whoever I want in any life I want. If you realize that. The experience being a rock or a 
Yes, you can experience being a rock or a blade of grass. In the Oversoul, you have free will to do these things as well. But, you see, a rock or a blade of grass has a viewpoint of the world that no one else has. A rock is a constant. A blade of grass is growing in a way that you can't even imagine. They're growing out through their... And, and are affected by the sun in greater ways than you can imagine, and turning colors and seeing things, and, and yes, they have feelings as well. Do they feel things the same way we do? You do? No. But there is a sensation. And that sensation needs to be felt in one life or another. Why? How are you to understand God if you're not a rock at times? If you're not a blade of grass, if you're not a tree, if you're not a frog. I think that's a human thing, isn't it? A frog, yes. I have, I say frog because there is a being, there is a life, a frog-like beings in a very close um, area to my space. And so I'm very familiar what frogs look like. So there, and I do really like them, even though, you know, they're, yes, their language is a little guttural, but that's all right. Continue. Yes, it's just all part of the omniscience, omni, omni-variety, and omni-everything that God is. Thank you so much. Sarah? Hello, Shell. Greetings. Ah, Sarah, how are you? Um, I have a very heavy question Ah. because um, I've been dealing with something you discussed earlier. Uh, Yes. A friend of mine has been using substances and I happen to see the being you described that in the, the negative way. Yes. Because I was sent to help this person. And I was wondering, you said you have to know specifically where to send it. Exactly. And I was wondering if you can tell me what to do about it. All right. I see that particular... You have to name this particular being as well. It's it's not an earthly being, and it is not a friendly being. It is very... Very malevolent. So uh, you have to name it. And I would have Grindel or Takur do that for you. And then you would have to uh, do a small ceremony because this is what they understand to be the truth about who they are. They can only leave with the understanding that they know where they're going and they understand that they have not been invited to leave but forced to leave. You understand that? That you do not say please go. You say out. But there are only certain people that can do the ceremonies, and earn only certain people that know how to name them. Grindel is one of them. Grindel knows the names, can name them. He has that skill and talent. I don't know how he knows what to do, but he does know how to name the different spirits or elements or entities. So therefore. A call on him to help him with the, help you with this. Plus the fact that there is not just one individual in this person. I see that there is more than one. You're strong, Sarah. It will be okay. You know what to do. You will know what to do. There's more than one entity. I'm sorry. Much love to you, though, and be strong, because you you will win. You will win. It will not be... It is not hopeless. Do not feel that way. There is no such thing as hopeless. I've, the greater understanding of hopeless is that it does not exist. Do you understand you, that? Sure. Yes. It does not exist at this time in any universe. Hopeless does not exist unless you believe it does exist. 
It is part of the belief system, and I wish the word had never been invented. Okay. Thank you. I will ask for help. Thank you. I will send you some energy immediately. Is there other more, questions? Do we have more questions? I got one real quick. Thank you. I have a question too. Yes. Go ahead, Jasmine. I'll go after you. Oh, thank you. thank you. Okay. Um, hello, I have a question that the calling is yesterday. Can you can you see that or can you connect to that? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you what dreams. you said. Can I, I think connect I was to at Oh, sorry. Go yeah, ahead. I, because I think I was at the colony yesterday. Can you connect to that or do I have to tell you my dreams? Go ahead and... Go for the rest of the people, it would be best if you would tell the dream. Okay. Um, so I remember I was at sea. Yes. And uh, there was a ship, and uh, a ship flipped over a couple of times. So I felt like I was on a roller coaster, and some people from the colon uh, from the human colonies were there. And I remember like the training rooms and some castle or something like that. I was flying as well. Okay. I mean, what has happened is that when you were going astrally into the colonies, you were having some difficulties. That's just why you were seeing the movement of the ship on the sea. Your, you, it was not a smooth transition into the colonies. However, you finally did make it. And um, I am not sure, but I think that you were in the uh, telepathic room. You were in a class for the tele telepathy, and you felt so good that you finally did make it. The flying part was also part of the, the trip to the colonies. You were having trouble, and then you, the flying part was you actually made it through. And that was good. And um, you did have some very good experiences there. The remembering of the ship on the sea is significant. Let me tell you why. Your belief system was in some doubt as to whether you were going to make it to the colonies or not. But they strengthened that and you were fine. But there's also something going on in your lifetime in third dimension that is also, that is speaking to. You feel like you're being tossed around in third dimension as well. Yes, that's good. So, um, can you tell me what's like, what was the main thing, main, main event in my trip to the colonies yesterday? Yes, so you were learning some telepathy. However, they did send you over to the channeling section. They're telling me now that you worked on some channeling. This is something also that your belief system is, you're dealing with in your belief system, but fear not, it will come about. Just continue to encourage yourself. Your ego is in balance in most ways, but you find yourself pulled down by some people at times. Keep yourself up. Okay. Thank you. Is that connected to the life I have here? Because yes. I'm traveling a lot. Yes. I see something there, yes. Any messages about that? Um, they just want to say, just keep yourself in a, a balanced condition because, you know, Travel can be very difficult on the body and pull the spirit down as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Bye -bye. welcome. Thank you. Hello, Shell. How are you doing? I am fine. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering... Uh, uh, in this in this whole in this particular universe, 
uh, when it comes to free will. Uh, is there a yeah. certain percentage of planets, certain percentage of experiences that do have free will for that for that uh, experience? Free will is always an omnipresent, which means that if you decide that your contract on this earth is not not you do not want to do it at this time, you can have free will to change it. And that is something that is coming across more and more to some individuals. It was thought at one time that a contract was set in stone and you couldn't change it, but what is the good of free will if you can't change something? So therefore, free will is always present and will always be present. And I hope that answers your question because this, your free will, even though you may feel that it is being interfered with, there is something that has happened in the past that is caused because of your free will that your free will is interfered with. And you knew that that would come about in your subconscious. Okay, thank you, Emma. Is there anything that's interfering right now? Because uh, I have had for a while, for a couple months now, uh, blockages in my throat and my upper chest. And, and Yes, let me tell you what that is about. Um, they want you to stop and do introspection there. You cannot move forward with blockages. You must get rid of the blockages. Do meditation about clearing these blockages and ask them why they're there. Because there is a spiritual message connected with the one in the throat about communication. The one in the chest is something to do with heart matters, not necessarily physical. But there is a heart matter with family, friends, loved ones, or a lover, or something that needs to be dealt with. That is always the reason for blockages, is for self-inspection. It stops you in your tracks. You know it's there, and therefore it has to be dealt with before you can move on. Do you understand that? That's good. But it's always a positive thing. Yes, thank you, Shell. And uh, just wondering, uh, uh, is my Shikani Esasani self ready to be revealed, or is it? Because I was supposed yes, to connect. In, once you take care of these blockages, it will be revealed fully. Okay, thank you, buddy. Much love You're to you. Much love to you. Hello, Hello dear one. Thank you. Oh. Greetings, Hello. dear one. How are you doing? I am uh, well. Great. First question is regarding the ego. At, at times, I think the ego is an entity because it take, it overrules, you know, the, the ones who have no control over it, the ego. Is it an entity, or is it we're personalizing it and you giving it that force? The ego is expression of who you are. The ego is expression of the soul, spirit, mind, and body and soul all, all put together. It, you can control it. If you believe you can't control it, then it goes wild sometimes. But bring your belief system into balance. You see, if you can't control the ego, it's out of balance in some way. So um, know that you are in control. Because yes, I am. <laughs> that the ego is part of who you are, so you can control it. Yeah, we can suppress it, yes. The you second can, question? Yes. The second question is regarding the uh, colony and the holographic uh, coin. So yes. uh, lately I'm, I'm sleeping deeply and I believe I'm gone, you know, but I have no any recall of any memories. I do believe I'm gone, but I have no idea of anything else, you know. So could you please tap on that and tell me well, what I'm Well, I'm doing? not part of Gurkvik Nir, but I can tell you that they have been still bringing people astrally to the colonies and that they have been working on many things uh, to help people remember. However, even if you don't remember, it comes back in your subconscious. And your subconscious, when first contact comes, many people's subconscious will be awakened of their past lives and other worlds and things of this nature because they will relate to uh, experiences and not know, some of them, 
some people will not know why they are relating to it, and it is because it is held in their subconscious. However, oh, I got off the question already. But um, it is about the question anyway. The question is about holog holographic uh, memory. You know, cannot. Remember. Oh yeah. But I'm not part of their, their but I, they are bringing people astrally still. And you're, because you do not remember, it does not mean that you have not gone. But you have been there. Let me see. Is Takur here? He's channeling part. I need that part, you know? Yes, she said you've been there. Yes, I did. And that you are yeah. in the channeling section. Yes. And she said that you need to... Uh, you have a lot of confidences in a lot of places, but Beautiful. the one place you need confidence is in your channeling. Right. Yeah, I need a so boost there, please. Boost yes, me. you do need a boost Give there, yes. Yeah. I but you have touch. you have many other confidences, and she thank said you. you'll finally get there, yes. Ooh, thank you. That's uh, really a good gift that I got today. Thank you very much, and I will appreciate it. Beautiful. Oh, I love you, will you guys. Be I do love you. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Noha. And Roxanne has a question today. Roxanne. Hi, sweetie. I have a question from Luke, and yes. it's along the same line as uh, the colonies idea. And let me pull it up because he had a dream that he was in a living room with Bashar and some other people learning some stuff. So. He's kind of equating this. He wanted to ask if he's been to the colonies, and if not, he would like them to know. So he's kind of thinking that the Bashar dream was kind of an interaction with the human colonies, not that Bashar was there. Maybe that's the way he was translating it. Uh, but I understand. Has he been to the colonies? If not, he just makes sure, send him the message, and say, hi, I'm ready to go. Go ahead. Exactly. Very good. And uh, one moment. He has had an astral meeting with Bashar, but it was not in the colonies. But he has met Bashar in an astral realm. One moment. He has gone to the colonies once, but they intend to bring him many more times. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's all, Bella, that I have. Okay. Are there any more questions in our group? I got one Very really well. quick. That's okay. Really quick. Um, yeah. Uh, when it comes to free will, another question about free will. Uh, yeah. You have the say. Say you have uh, two species, and once uh, one species created a. Uh, Another species to be a, a, a like sort like a slave, like to, to they do certain things and uh, they're controlled by a certain individual. So it's your free will to incarnate as a soul into that one uh, controlled uh, individual. Now, when it comes to that individual species that's being controlled, uh, how, what does free will come to play in, in their experience? Well, first of all, you realize that if you come into another. Uh, species as a slave, you were contracted to do that, you know that you were going to be there, you know what you were going to do, but your free will is that you can, you do not have to stay like that. Of course, uh, being that you were contracted into a slave position, the chances are it would be very difficult to get out of that, but you do have free will within that to to act any way that you would like. Now, it would be smart if you were there to experience the slave action as it is intended to be experienced so that your soul will have that experience and not have to do that again. But you do have free will within that experience to do many different things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Perfectly. Now, if, if, you're, if your free will... Now, if you were... A, put in a cage or whatever, your free will is limited. But what you do inside the cage, your free will has everything to do with that. If you want to not urinate in the cage, then you don't. You know, you, if you want to pray, you can pray. If you want to 
scream, you can scream. Your free will is still there, into some, but it is limited. You have limited your free will by the different things that you have contractualized. Gotcha. But it's Thank still you. there. Thank you. But you also know that you have put a limit on your free will, and that was your free will to do that. Yo. Thanks, yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, yes, definitely, perfectly. Uh, you explained it uh, precisely. Thank you. Very well. Thank you. All right. Do we have any more questions? If not, I can move on. Did I sufficiently answer questions about the ego for you? I would like to ask. Ah, oh, there is another ask. question in the room. Sabrina. Yes. This is Sandy. Um, I have a question regarding the higher self's role in free will. Yes. I understand that the higher self is guiding our entire path yes. of life. <clears throat> but we as an individual have free will to... Yes. Our, our decisions. Correct. But as far as the higher self, who rules in... Oh, let me explain that to you. Okay, the, whole, the higher self is a volunteer to, to the soul. The soul is the one that wants to experience this lifetime. It is you. This is the you that has put the contract, but the soul has a has will a free will also to select someone or have someone volunteer to help them through an experience that they they are not familiar with therefore the higher self is only a guide the higher self will make suggestions and perhaps uh, uh, question some of your decisions but you still you make that you you still have the free will but he is only there to help you guide through this lifetime that the soul has no idea how to experience yet. Do you understand? So it's a suggestion to do it this way or that way, and then the soul decides, which is you, which way to, that they want to experience it. Which is me as a physical body? Which is you as a spiritual body that guides the physical body. So what's the difference in me as a physical body making a decision as a well, the brain is the guide, the guide on the physical body. But if you have a spiritual life, sometimes you ask the soul how the mind should react. Now, you can react spiritually, you can react mentally, you can react physically sometimes. Sometimes the physical takes over and there is no way to stop it in some ways because the, it is... That's the way it was made. So, um, but you do have free will, and it has free will as well. So, if you put them all together, that's the balance of them. But you can speak from one area or another in free will. It's my understanding that, like the soul or the higher self, whichever, will actually cause an accident in your life if you're going off your path too far. It can, if your belief system lets it. You see, that's part of your belief system, too. Your belief system is saying, I'm too far off the path. I need something to happen. But me as a physical person doesn't believe that. Correct. But there is part of you that does. Because there is many different belief systems within you, and the, when they all come together, that's when you have the greatest power. So I'm not conscious of that belief. Of course, you have a subconscious. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I understand what you're saying, and yes, make yourself aware of some things that you're not aware of. Meditation. Did someone else have a, a, a question out there? Yes, Sabrina. Ah, oh, Sabrina, welcome. Hello, Shell. <clears throat> oh, dear, you sound, you sound dreadful. <laughs> I am. Um... But I wanted to ask you this, and you might have answered this, so I didn't hear the beginning, but um, 
the ego and the belief system that you yes. have, um, where where do the two come apart? Like, are the belief systems brought in and held in by the ego? The ego they... is the expression of the belief system, the expression of who you are and the personality. And the belief system is what you have learned from the outside and from the inside during your meditations and during the stimulation from society, parents, childhood, etc., etc. Now, the ego is the expression of all these things. Do you understand that? Yes. So your belief system is being expressed. So whenever you express, if you tell a lie, is that expressing your ego? Yes. Let me tell you why. Even though it is not expressing a true part of, w of what you feel, it is an expression of your imbalance of the ego. Do, do you understand that? It's still an expression. So therefore, when you, when you say untruth or you say something that's not true or, or say something that you don't feel as correct, it's still an expression of your belief system and it's still an expression of who you are. So be careful with that. Lying can be very, very, uh, tell very much about who you are. Okay, and then when transforming or um, belief systems, um, do you work at it from the belief system angle or from the or uh, from the ego side? Because obviously Actually, the ego has taken it on. Yeah. Actually, there's several different stimuli for the belief system. There's what comes from outside. There's what comes from inside. There's what comes from experience. Now, that's outside as well. However, as I'm talking about outside as far as what people say and do or express. But your experience is very important in your belief system. What you have experienced, if it goes along with what they are speaking about, fortifies your belief system so that you may be weaker or stronger in your, your faith or your disbelief or whatever. But introspection about spirituality and perception about who God is and who you are does affect everything. So there's so many things to look at. There's so so many things that affect who you are. It's not just one little thing. It's not two little things or five little things, but everything around you affects who you are, including your body, including how your body is good, bad, and different, how you look, how you feel, what you see, what you don't see, how perceptive you are, what your IQ is, what your emotional IQ is, all these different things, everything makes you unique. You, you may think you think much like someone else, but there are parts of you that think very differently than anyone else in the whole universe. And if you think that's not practical, it probably isn't in your world, but it's actually true. There is a part of you that's more unique than any other person in the entire universe. Because why? Because God made you that way. He made it so that there is a uniqueness. Why would he make anyone the same? Therefore, get well. Oh, blessings. Thank you, Cheryl. Blessings to you. That's the the, I know you're question. not feeling well. Did I answer your question, by the way? Yes, yes. I, I was just trying to, to dissect this a little bit um, because sometimes when people have had childhood 
um, things in their childhood that have been told to them that was not positive, right. and they exactly. internalize it as being truth. Remember, when you dissect something, when you open it up, do you just see one little thing when you open up the body? No, you see all the organs, you see blood vessels, you see skin, you see all kinds of different things. That's the same way with everything in reality. There's, when you open it up, you see many things, not just one thing. It is multifaceted and multidimensional. And so when you're looking at the ego, you can't just look at the expression, but what causes the expression, where does it come from, all the things that affected it, and, and many things, and dissection, when you're doing a dissection, and you remove one particular thing to look at that, when you move, remove that one little thing, like the heart, there's many things within that as well. Many, mm. many sections of the heart, many sections, there's blood, there's all kinds of things in that one little thing that you're removing. So you must remember not to take something totally out of the context of where, where it belongs because that's like saying I'm taking, I'm taking fantasy see, away from reality. It's impossible because fantasy and reality are one. You understand that? You cannot just take one thing and put it by itself because it is affected by everything around it. And therefore, when you look at one thing, you have to look at many things. Yeah, because, yeah, I understand what you're saying. You can't look at it as an abstract when it's part of something else. Of course. Um, <laughs> but I understand where you're coming from. But I just wanted to tell you that because sometimes people would like to be able to remove it and put it over here so they can look closer at it and figure out where all the different stimuli came from. And that is possible. And let me tell you how. Because if you do not exclude all the other things, you can look at that one thing for what it actually is. Okay. Thank you, Shell, and thank you for coming today. Thank you for asking me. Sure, we have uh, one question here from uh, Michelle. Uh, she would like to know about the mass concentrations of Eshikani energy coming through the Epsilon uh, moonlight and if yes. there are any messages for her. All right. Well, I would have to put myself in a different perspective to answer that, but I can do that. Hold on. Yes, yeah, this is something Bashar has mentioned recently. The Epsilon Moonlight, yes, one moment. It is, it's totally out of context to where I am in that. But, but there is a message for her there, and that is that this light, this moonlight is a reflection, and she is a reflection of also some other lights not connected to the, the light that she is seeing. All kinds of reflective lights have been connected with her, and she's going to bring this together for enlightenment of some sort. She is a different kind of light force that's, that she has within her. Does this make sense to her? Uh, she's not with us right now, um, so she can digest this and maybe talk yes, another time. Yes, she has a... She has a very uncommon light source, but it's wonderful. It's beautiful. Okay, perfect. Um, Ellie? Uh, hello, Cheryl. Hello. Is, uh, from Bulgaria. I don't think we have spoken before, but let me send you love and light. And Thank you. Best. And love and light to you as well. And I send this to Jim as well, as we don't have much time to chat, unfortunately. Um, I just want to ask you, uh, five days ago, uh, during my sleep, I had an interaction with an energy, a manly voice that was very loud in my head. It was almost like shouting. And he was telling me a lot of things, and it, in the end I asked him who he is, but I really don't remember. Do you have any idea what, what happened? Where was I that night? It was a very... 
life experience? It was, it sounds like a God force. Did he mention that he, did he have a name? I don't remember, but it was so clear and it was almost like hitting a wall, <laughs> the dialogue. Yes. That sounds like a God energy to me. And that they were telling you very specifically that they wanted to speak to you about something very specific. It Do you remember what they spoke to you about? Unfortunately, no, but I remember it was a very long dialogue. It was a long conversation. I remember the energy for, it was for a long time during the night and in between my daughter was uh, was having almost a bad, uh, also a bad dreams and she was crying so it was very like a stressful experience but in between they were, the godlike energy was talking to me something very serious and something very straight and uh, I really, I wanted to to come here and uh, speak about this because because it was a very very strong and intense energy it is I know what part of the message is it is about your daughter who is crying um, the message is that she's extraordinary and has some great potential and that you're supposed to always and continually support that and that your energies are very well supported as well by God energies. There is something happening that they are not letting me know what it is, but there is something happening, some changes going on in your life. Yes, I'm working on many levels. I'm going to the colonies regularly and uh, spiritually there's a lot going on. Yes, they're telling me that this was a, a strong message and that it and you know what it is you don't have to know what it is consciously but you will you are already acting on it so that's fine that's one of my uh, good sides I don't know the things in in reality but my intuition always leads them towards so yes you have an incredible intuition actually indeed. so that is good indeed thank you yes so you do uh, much love and, and you light. are working on the colonies in colony two. Did you know that? Yes. Yes, you are working in colony two and doing an absolutely wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Uh, much love and light, everyone, and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Emma. Blessings to you and continue to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Shell. I have a quick question, if I can, please. Yes. This is Valerie. Hello, and Valerie. I would, I would like to know if you can comment about our moon and how it's moved recently into the more muted signs. There's many things happening on your moon. Uh, I could not even begin to tell you what is going on there, but it has moved, and it it seems to have moved. But the energies of the Earth and the the slight wobble that the Earth has from the energies that are striking it from the center of the galaxy have caused it to look like that it it, it is moving. You will see it in one sub part of the sky one evening, in another part of the sky, and it, some people have noticed noted that because of the wobble of the earth but yes there are many beings on the far side of the moon and they have actually hollowed out portions of it so that they can observe earth through the moon and see through all through the other side they do have that technology and they're also uh, good and malevolent beings there sharing some space in the back part and on the top there are some uh, very good beings, Fendorians I believe and um, it's just a very interesting place right, right now I do not know if it actually has moved but it, it, does, it, it has turned slightly a bit is that what you're talking about, the slight turn? Not exactly, but that's fine. Uh, what are you speaking of then? 
I'm speaking of how it's moving through the constellations. Ah, it is actually uh, looks like it's doing something different than it actually is. I wish I could be more specific, but the wobble of the Earth is making it look like it's it's uh, doing something different than it actually is. It's actually the Earth that is moving and not the moon. It is going out slowly, just increments. Yes, when it's I, been doing that for centuries. And yes. Once the shift is here, being it, it, it is not a planet. It's it isn't a planet. No, it's not a planet. No. So that it will. Is it a satellite? Removed. It did. It will leave. Um, some believe it will leave. Yes, it is mm -hmm. said that it will leave at one time. That is a variable. There, there are some thoughts about that, and 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 it goes by different timelines. Whatever person channels into their timeline, which there are thousands of that you can access, it can be a part of one of those timelines. There's so many things that are part of different timelines, it's very unusual. So um, I cannot tell you exactly what is going to happen because the timelines interact. You, you understand that uh, a decision can cause it, the timelines to merge, of course, or separate. So therefore, um, it is interesting what you speak about but at this time there is no danger let me put it that way but what it appears to be doing yes it is moving away from the earth to some degree it's been doing this for centuries why because the gravity around the earth is getting lighter a little bit and and also the turn of the earth you cannot uh, pull it as strong because the earth is slowed down slightly as well over the millions of years so you, you're like I said, change is inevitable. It's and it's constant, constant change always. There is never a time when things are static, always and ever changing, forever and ever. That was I think wonderful. I should yes. That was that was beautiful, Cheryl. Thank you so much. Well, I think I should go now. We love you. Thank you. Um, I am sensing that people are needing to have a break. <laughs> yeah, especially you, Jim. <laughs> oh, yeah, Cheryl. Yeah, our, our, our infinite gratitude for you being here with us today and sharing your insights and perspectives on these matters. As always, we hope our exchange of information benefits all of us in every single way that's possible. I love you all and thank you for having me today. I I was happy to share some insights and information. Thank you, Shell. You've answered all our questions wonderfully. Thank you very much. Much love. Much love, Shell. Okay, as Jim comes back around, we are, instead of doing a galactic blessing today, um, oh, we could do a blessing afterwards if need. Um, do, uh, if you wish to join us with this, of course. And if Sabrina and anybody else is willing to receive this small, well, I would say, I want to say small, I would say short meditation type of healing. I'm going to lead a five, ten minute healing to help Sabrina, help Kim, help anybody else that I know that is going through a few uh, emotional and physical um, disease is the best way to put it, always, is your heart of ease. Also, Victoria and me. <laughs> How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you oh, you're welcome. I hope you had a good session. Is there anything you want to say? All right. Who's going to say? Who's going to do the blessing for Sabrina? <laughs> We're going to do a quick healing for Sabrina. Um, plus anybody else who wants to do it. Um, I'll be leading it. Um, 
Uh, so if you just give me a couple of uh, just a few short seconds, I will just prepare myself. Um, all I ask is you just get a little bit comfy. Um, it's not so much of a Reiki healing. It's more of a directed um, healing using spirit and your guides. And we are going to be making whoever needs a healing, Sabrina, Kim, they're all, all of a sudden their house is going to be very, very busy. So I'd just like you to start first and just close your eyes if you wish. That helps. Start breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Focus on your breath. Breath is the life. Life is the breath. Feel the breath going in. Feel the breath going out. Feel the breath going into your chakras, activating the chakras, intending them to be in alignment, to connect, to heal, to unify. The chakras all open through. Your root chakra now connects to the root chakra of the earth. So you are now fully connected to the root chakra of the earth. From the energy going up through now, the rest of your chakras, solar plexus, sacral, heart, throat, we now go through to the top of our anus, the heads, the crowns of the sun, and connect the anus of the sun, thus creating a trinity between you the earth and the sun. Breathe in that connection. Now imagine the person that needs to be healed. You can be everywhere, anywhere, right now. Sabrina, Kim, everybody else that you may know, call to them right now. Ask them. Ask them in your mind if they wish to receive this healing energy. And we surround them. We join hands and we surround them. And we all use our green intentional heart energy of love and surround them and envelop these people with love, with healing, with pure vibrational intention to create what they need to heal themselves and as we connect our heart chakras together we create this green field we can also now invite our entourage our following our supporters our guides even if you wish you can use the word God. And they are all connecting through their chakra points to you in another ring around the person you want to heal. And they are creating an even more beautiful, iridescent color of healing that is unperceivable by the human eye, but will help this person who wishes to receive this healing right now right now. That energy is there. Feel it. Bring it in. Take it in. Inhale it in. Breathe out what you do not need, what does not serve you mentally, physically, emotionally. For this year is a year of change. And the next year and the years on this will be a common practice for us to gather and create these amazing, wonderful healings to help each other. I thank you all. You're so much gratitude for participating and being all that you are to help all that is be the best of what it is. With love, with grace, I love you all. Thank you so much. 
And for all those who know Reiki, would you please send healing energy to Sabrina as well? Thank you. All that needs it. May the energy flow. May the love flow. <laughs> that was amazing, you guys. Much love. Thank you. Thank Do you. Do we have a closing prayer? Anybody? Roxy? Sure. Hey, Jim, do you want to translate or you want me to translate? Go ahead and translate if you like. That's great. Sure. Kamiya Toshna to collective. Kumbariya Shinika na Kona Shakuru. Lumerian civilization. So it is our blessing. Kamana ego kashnikaniya love kumata. From Shukuru, from the Lumerian civilization, would like to extend his service of love for the ego. And understand it is a blessing, oh yes, entities, a blessing to understand the experience of the ego. Do not separate it. Do not hold it down. Do not shun it away. Bless it, for it will bring you creation in this idea of your expression to be coalesced into one idea. Be blessed, my children. Shokuru. That's it. Okay, thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you, Valerie. Thank You're you, welcome. Jim. Everybody else. Thank you very much, YouTube viewers. Without you, please subscribe to Hugo TV. Um, this has been um, a Hugo TV presentation of our regular Saturday webinar on the twelfth of the twelfth of two thousand and fifteen. So some wonderful numbers there. Go out and meditate today. There's lots of amazing worldwide meditations going on. So people, increase the peace. And we'll see you Booyah. next time. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye. Love you all. Have a nice day.